So this is quick tip. I think it's number two for the small groups class. And this week is week two. And we're looking at groups as systems. And that's exactly what groups are. If you think about what's a system, a system is some element that is made up of a lot of different components. And all of those components contribute to the overall functioning and success of the system, right? And that's what a group is. A group has a task, such as in this class, fulfilling the group assignment for the class, right? And it's made up of different components. You've got all of the different members of each of the groups. You've got all of the things that each of those members bring with them. You've got the dynamics that are built up within the group as the group spends time together and works towards their goals and that kind of thing. Um, the text has this really good story at the very beginning of it, and I'm going to read it. Yes, I realize you have a textbook and you can read. I hope all of you can read. But this story really illustrates an important component about systems because every one of the components in a system has to be functioning in order for the system to function. And the same is true about groups. And as soon as one of those components isn't functioning well or isn't functioning correctly, doesn't function at all, it has a huge, what we'll call ripple effect that's gonna become important here in a little bit, has a ripple effect that happens that really can be devastating to a group. It can also have a huge ability to impact the group in a positive manner. So here's the story. <clears throat> in one of my small group communication courses, six women formed a project group. During their first meeting in class, communication was warm, friendly, and task-oriented. They accomplished a great deal in a short period of time. Obviously, they're functioning well. Deciding which of the five project options they would pursue, um, dividing labor to develop the project, and setting deadlines for accomplishments of specified tasks. They said they were all very pleased with the new group. So they got together. They're starting just like you did or you are doing this week. They started building that group dynamic, the group will, next week you'll find out we'll call it climate. And they started already figuring out, okay, here's the people we have in the group. Start talking about what strengths and weaknesses each person has. Here's the tasks we need to accomplish. How should we distribute work, blah, 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 blah. During the next week, the six women met one more time for a lengthy session, and again, they were pleased by their progress on the project and increasingly comfortable with the harmonious interactions. So they're looking at the functional dynamic, and some of this we haven't talked about yet, but the functional dynamic of the group, as well as the social dynamic, and you need both, as we'll find out. They're critical. Both of those are very critical in high-functioning, successful groups. <clears throat> Then a male student who had missed a week of class and had no project group approached me and asked which of the four groups he should join. I told him to join the all-woman group for two reasons. One, I typically encourage mixed sex, not same-sex groups, and there were far more women in this class than men. And of course, you typically, and, and you'll hear this all the way through the semester, we encourage diversity as much as possible. So adding a bit of diversity in, right? And the other groups had seven members already. This group only had six. So they had technically a slot open, right? From the moment he joined the six women, he transformed this harmonious task effective group into a frustrating experience for every single group member. So now by joining in, he has changed the dynamic of the group. His opening introductory remark upon joining the, the group of women was, I hope PMS won't be a problem for us. He guffawed at his supposed humor, but all six women were seemed stunned. During the group meeting, he made sexist remarks, offered derogatory comments about the choice of project already decided by the women, and made a complete nuisance of himself. So he's obviously not fitting in and causing problems in causing a bad ripple in the group. As he left the class, he proudly proclaimed to everyone that he was the leader of a chicks group. All six women bolted to the front of the class and asked me to assign this disruptive individual to another group. 
I explained that moving him would make the other groups too large and would merely pass the problem to another group, not solve it. I noted that this was an opportunity to experiment with communication strategies for dealing with difficult members, which is something that's going to come up and something we're going to talk about and in the real world happens all the time. But I gave them a choice. I could rescue them by intervening or I could let them handle their bad apple without my infer inference. To their credit, they chose the latter. This is an excellent chapter that shows you groups function as systems. And all of those systems have to be doing well, or you've got serious issues. So I'm going to go to share screen because this is the PowerPoint that I show normally in my in my regular class. So I actually I've, I've jumped a little ahead because I just did the story from the text. Groups are systems, and as such, they rely on things to function well. And you notice. Prior to this guy coming in, everything was harmonious. They were getting things done. They were all happy with the group. They were happy with each other. Had a very positive type of climate, as we'll talk about next week. He comes in. The whole thing gets shaken up. And now it's not functioning well. He's causing rifts and problems and all that kind of stuff. This is what happens in real life. And it's an excellent example of what we call the ripple effect. So this is also from the book. This is a picture of a band. And, and being a musician, I can relate to this extremely well. Any one of these four individuals can, of course, play their instrument the way they want to and probably entertain, right? But in this function, they're a group, they're a band. And so each member of the band has a role to fulfill. So you've got the guitar player, the keyboard player, the drummer, and the singer. They all have certain functions that they need to do and do well in order for the group to succeed, survive, do well, and, and be a harmonious group like the six women were. And it never fails to happen that you maybe somebody else says, hey, we need a bass player, and they bring a bass player in, and then the bass player doesn't fit in with the rest of the group, and all of a sudden the harmony goes away and it doesn't sound like they're playing together anymore because there's definitely a groove that you can fall into. I find this in my in my current band all the time. We will lock into a groove and we can play for hours, you know, and never feel anything bad. Um, but if we had someone in there that didn't fit and we actually tried out a keyboard player a couple of weeks ago that did not fit at all and you feel the whole thing become discombobulated, this is messing with the system. And so it's really good to think of when you're thinking of bands as a system or groups as a system and the roles within a group, think of it as a band because that same element happens all the time. Or a lot of times I'll use sports teams as an example. Both of those have groups divided into components and those components all need to work in their own separate fields or their own separate skill sets to make the overall group succeed. And when they don't, it's called a ripple effect or whenever something comes along that changes the dynamic of the group, because it doesn't have to be a negative. It's called the ripple effect. And this is talked about quite a bit in chapter two. When one part of a system causes a significant impact on the whole system. Now, notice it's not saying a positive impact or a negative impact. When any kind of an impact comes along that significantly affects the group you have a ripple. A lot of times we focus on the negative, but there are positive ripples too. A very small part of a group can make a huge ripple. So here you had six women, for example, in that story at the beginning, and you have one guy come along and he may, he's one person out of seven, but he makes such a disruption that the whole group, the dynamic and the social structure of the group starts to fall apart. Um, the same thing can happen in a positive standpoint where you feel like, eh, we got somebody comes along and all of a sudden, boom, the group is just clicking on all cylinders. Teams experience this a lot of times. A sports team, for example, will have one element that's just not quite where it needs to be, and they'll bring in a new player, and suddenly everything clicks, and they start really winning and succeeding and playing well together. That's a positive ripple. Now, to demonstrate that, um, these are two clips that were suggested by the author of the textbook, Dan Rothwell. They're both from the same movie. 
Um, it's a Christmas movie called The Family Stone. And it's a really good example. The, the Stone family, that's her last name, um, is a good example of a group system that functions well within itself. And you'll see the ripple effect happen in these two clips. And a look what happens to the dynamic of the particular group. Ripples happen within systems and those ripples can affect the overall performance of the group. And you just see that so strongly right there. But it's important to remember that ripples can be positive and ripples can be negative and you don't always know ahead of time what's going to happen. You know, you, when you, this is especially evident when you have to add a new member or a, a member of a team leaves, because sometimes teams work for a long period of time and the, the members, the components have to switch out sometimes. And sometimes bringing somebody in can have a negative effect on the team. Sometimes bringing somebody in can get a reinvigoration of the team. And so ripples are important parts of systems and they can have positive and negative influences depending on the component bringing in and how well you understand the group roles, which is something we're going to talk about some this week and also next week, what roles are open, what roles you need to fill, the, the components that you choose to bring into the group, because most of the time the group gets to pick its own members. Um, does it pick based off the roles it needs well so this person's coming in and they seem to have the right skill set to fill the roles that aren't being met within the system you know and it could have a positive ripple effect or you bring somebody in and they don't have the right skill set or something else is wrong and it causes a negative ripples ripples impact systems big time both in groups and even in like machinery you know one one cog comes apart that's a ripple effect and it tears up the entire machine. And sometimes the machine stops functioning entirely. And that's true with groups as well. So it's important to think of groups as systems and also what kind of ripples will come out of um, the groups that you have. So that's what I have for this quick tip. Um, I'll be doing some more as well. Good luck with um, the assignments and good luck with your teams coming together this week. I, you just got your assignments this week. So on Monday, this is Wednesday. It's only been a couple of days. I, I haven't checked yet. In fact, I'm going to do that now and see how the teams are doing within each other. Um, but looking forward to seeing you down the road and some more quick tips. I'll see you later. Bye.